Hey guys, so here's the next episode of PAL, and we're going to cover the first stage of photography, which is visualization. But I first wanted to start with a question that was uh, sent to us after our first PAL episode. This comes from uh, Lafayette, and here's what he said. Background information, I began my journey into wedding photography, chasing technical proficiency, cool tricks, seeing the light, X, Y, Z, but after six years of shooting, I've come to find out a picture without a moment or emotion is meaningless, and emotion and moments are king. You're absolutely right. So here's my question. How do you capture emotion or the moment? Big question, we'll get to that. How do you anticipate when and where to be? Wow, another big question. Does pre-visualization count when chasing moments and emotion? Yes. <laughs> That's a quick answer. Does knowing yourself really mean anything when shooting other moments? Wow, I don't know if I can answer that one, but we'll try. And what I mean by this is, if you can see it happening and know it's a moment or emotional, does it matter how you feel about it based on who you are? Okay, well those are some good questions and that fits into visualization, believe it or not. Visualization, Ansel Adams actually said in his video that it's really the whole key to a photograph. Now let's look at what visualization means. It means you use your mind to pre-visualize or get the mental picture of what you want that photograph to look like. And I believe the way Ansel meant it is that it's not just how that photograph looks inside your camera, but where is it going to end up at the end of the day? Is it going to be in a book? So if so, how's it going to look on the page of the book? Is it going to be on the wall? How big is it going to be? Is it going to be black and white? Is it going to be color? How is it going to be framed? Those are actually all parts of visualization. Now visualization actually breaks down to a couple of different steps. There's a real pre-pre-visualization process, which is looking at art, looking at what really makes things look beautiful or emotional in the, in the case of uh, the question here. Like what sparks things for you? I recommend you go to museums a lot and look at art, not just photography, look at sculpture. You know, you, you go to the Louvre and you get inspired by thousands of works of art and those things actually can stick in your mind because when you go out and looking at life, maybe you'll see something kind of like it. It's not to imitate those things, although there's nothing really wrong with that, but it's just to see how other artists have captured life. That's one step of pre-visualization because you're actually, while you're doing that, you're forming your kind of own mental library of what looks good, you know, what works. Um, the next step of pre-visualization, let's say you're going on a trip. I'm gonna give the example of my trip to Paris about 10 years ago. I actually pre-visualized a number of photographs that I wanted to get, and I'll, I'll talk about those specifically in a minute. Now that also has happened, say, on a magazine assignment where I'm trying to capture something unusual and I'm going to the location where I think that's going to happen. That's part of pre-visualization, is putting yourself where you think that that moment will happen. So that answers kind of the question, does pre-visualization fit into you know, the emotion and the moment, yes, because you have to visualize where you want to be to capture that moment. Now, Henri Cartier-Bresson was the master of capturing the decisive moment. I believe he coined that phrase. Does it mean that he thought through every single one of those images? No, I doubt he did, but he put himself in those locations. He had to be standing outside the opera house to capture those women who were garbed in their opera gear, their gowns. He had to be really close to them because remember, he was using either a 35 millimeter lens or a 50 millimeter lens. So he had to get right up and personal and get right with them. That's all part of the visualization process. But it's knowing, of course, when do you capture that moment? And that comes from training. That comes from training your eye that comes from knowing your equipment so well that you're not fumbling, you know, uh, 
you should just have that down instinctively, and that's just going to come from practice. So Lafayette, I'm going to say the simple answer to all your questions is practice. If you've seen that moving beyond all the technical stuff is really where you need to go, which I completely agree with you, then it's just a matter of getting out there and finding your own voice, and that comes from taking a lot of pictures. And it comes from putting yourself in those places where you can feel that there's going to be a photograph. Now, I will often walk into a scene and it's kind of like, I don't know what it is. I can sense there's a photograph here somewhere and I'm looking for it, but I'm ready for it. Chance favors the prepared photographer is what Ansel Adams said. If you're prepared and then that moment comes along, you're ready to press the shutter you're going to get it. But if you're kind of, you know, not with it, you're going to miss that. There's an interesting thing that I've noticed that happens when I go and photograph is I have to get in the zone. And by that I mean I have to kind of disconnect from all the rest of the stuff I'm doing and what else is going on in the world and just put myself into a point where I'm looking for that photograph and I'm operating in sync with the camera and the environment and I'm ready to capture that moment. You have the external environment, which is what you're photographing. You're not able to photograph inside your head, I believe. But then you have the internal, which is where you visualize. Now he's talking about Stieglitz um, basically said he goes out and he finds something that moves him emotionally or there's something about it composition wise and he just tries to present that image to you the viewer and that's the way I look at photography I'm finding a moment and I'm trying to s let you see what I saw and hopefully it's something cool but if it isn't I'm not going to show it to you so you're only going to see the images at the end of the day that I think something happened there was some kind of a connection Okay, getting back to that decisive moment, it again comes back to putting yourself in those places where you're likely to capture a photograph. Okay, let me talk to you about three photographs that I visualized when I went to Paris. One of them is this famous French car called the Du Chevaux, two cylinder, it's a two cylinder car. And it's a beautiful piece of art, I think. Now, I knew before I went to Paris I wanted to capture one of these, and then I wanted the classic signature red. So I was standing on this corner waiting for a friend, and this car came zooming by, and you can see how I captured it. I let the motion be in the photograph, and Cartier-Bresson also said, sharpness is bourgeois meaning middle class, and he, he wasn't like big on everything has to be perfectly sharp. Listen, photography's art. Life isn't always totally sharp. It's okay to have some blurry stuff going on, right? I captured this moment. You can see in the post-production that I made the car red by masking the red of the car in Photoshop, and the rest of it is black and white. I don't use that technique a lot, but I thought it worked for this one. That would, again, was part of my pre-visualization. Here's another example, same trip to Paris. In the Tuileries, which is this big park that runs through Paris, there's a beautiful carousel that you see here. Now, I looked at it and I thought, you know, it's just going to be boring if I shoot it a 500th of a second and I get a still carousel. But what if I drag the shutter which means a long exposure and shoot it at a 25th of a second, then I'll have the motion of the carousel, but I could get everything else still. Well, the only problem is I didn't have a tripod. So I had to take this concept that I had in my mind and translate it into how am I going to shoot this. So there's a stanchion, which is one of these posts that comes out of the ground. I put my camera on it. By the way, you can always find a tripod. You can always put your camera on something to steady it. So I don't always carry a tripod, but I know I can always steady it on something. So I put the camera on that, shot it at a 25th of a second, got the motion of the carousel, but you can see the trees in the background is pretty stable. Another point of pre-visualization. 
A third image was, uh, again, walking through that same park, the Tuileries. I was thinking, I really like the curviness of the bikes in France. They have a different look than American bikes. So I saw these bikes, and I thought, OK, I want to capture these. I like to capture forms. And one of my mentors, Edward Weston, was all about forms. Look up his work if you haven't seen it, if you're not familiar with it. Amazing photographer. He captured forms of nude women, peppers, and even a toilet bowl in Mexico that looks beautiful. So if you can make a toilet look beautiful, you got to be a good photographer. These are all just parts of pre-visualization or visualization. OK, here's where you're going to go from here. I want you to, this is an exercise that I want you to do. I want you to, number one, decide what kind of photograph you want. Pre-visualize it. Don't even go out and look for it. Just decide what you want. And so that's going to narrow things down. Is it going to be a night shot? It's a person running down the, uh, in the beach or kids playing or whatever. You're going to decide that ahead of time. And then go out to that location where you think you can get that shot and pre-visualize it all the way through. Think what you want that photograph to look like before you press the shutter, then press the shutter. OK, then go ahead and process it and give us your best. Put it on our photo critique site or enter it into the contest. And let's see what it looks like. OK, thanks, guys. Remember to go out and capture your own images of life. Thank you.